so guys welcome back to another video and uh, in this video we are going to be talking about first of all i would like to apologize for not making a video in a very long time guys i had some family issues and my dad passed away so i had to take some time off uh, so yeah but now that i'm back uh, let's get into kotlin multi platform now you might wonder why i'm making a kotlin multi platform instead of a video on kotlin multi platform instead of flutter since flutter is the one on which this channel has been built upon i have made like over 100 150 videos showcasing flutter and its abilities and why did i make a video why did i make a move to kotlin multi platform uh the the thing is kotlin multi platform the google recently announced in one of the events that they will be now supporting kotlin multi platform officially and uh, the compose multi platform that is the uh, ui sharing for ios has now moved into beta as well and it's like really great guys it's simple and great so even if you haven't like written a native app at all and even if you are just a flutter developer who's been subscribed to my channel to watch a flutter content uh i assure you i'll be starting from the absolute basics so that you can follow and this out of this you'll get a complete native experience in both android as well as ios platforms so let's get started guys it's going to be pretty much easy this is going to be like I, i'll be starting from scratch all right so just follow along and i, I assure you we'll just pick it up as you go uh first in order to start right away you need uh android studio so if you haven't like installed android studio kindly go ahead and install it okay you'll be seeing a screen like this click on plugins and then here just type kotlin multi platform okay this is the plugin that you need to install you will be seeing a install button here if you click on that install button the plugin will be installed and the ID will automatically restart by itself. Once you have installed this plugin, go to projects and then click on new project. Now you won't see as of now, as of uh, June twenty fourth, you won't see uh, template, ready made template available in uh, Android Studio. So what you can do as a quick fix is that you can just go here, jkmp or jetbrains dot com, and then create a project from here. So you can go here and then you just give a project name compose. compose ui uh here as well you just give compose ui okay and uh, here just select android here select uh, ios as well as you can see this is in beta now and there are subsequent uh, platform settings i'll just select desktop as well now just click on download you will get a downloaded zip file simply open this file in android studio All right. This is how your initial window is going to be as soon as you open the app, guys. The app that you downloaded from this particular uh, wizard. Now, uh, for so for some guys, there might be a vertical word wrap line here. For in that case, just go to Android Studio Settings, and then inside this, in general, there will be something called Appearance, and then uncheck this Show Hard Wrap, and click on OK. That's it. Uh, now, switch this to Project so that you can see what sort of directories we have inside that particular. Uh, project file that we download, project template that we downloaded. Now you can see that there is a lot of directories. You are not going to go deep into everything as of now. For right now, let's just focus on creating a very simple app since this is going to be an absolute beginner video. Most of you guys, when you started out with Flutter, you, the very first app that you would have written would have been a counter app, right? So let's try to recreate that in Kotlin multi platform and see how easy that is here. So initially, let me just show you how to throw something on the screen. All right. So all you need to do is get into Compose app, and then inside this the source directory, uh, common main. Here you can see we we are now supporting the app for Android main, desktop, and iOS, right? So all these three platforms that we checked here, if you remember, Android, iOS, and desktop, all three uh, are available here, right? Uh, now inside. Let's just go to Kotlin and then click on app. We'll close this readme file. We don't need this now. App dot kt. Now I'll remove all this. I don't need all this since I'm going to be writing my own code. I don't need all this. And uh, let's just first throw something on the screen and I'll show you how it looks so that you can get a better idea. So initially, if you remember in Flutter, for everything we used to start with the uh, containers, right? Similarly, similar to a container, we have a box here, and this could be used. Okay, this is just the imports you need to uh, import something. All right, now that that import is done, let's just write something inside here. 
and you can specify some attributes for the box like say for instance you can do a modifier uh, modifier modifier dot fill max size this is like kind of expandable in flutter and it will simply uh, fill up the screen that's it and let me just add one more modifier that is for alignment so content alignment equals alignment dot center once again this is just we are just aligning what's inside the box that's it now we can specify whatever we want inside this particular box for instance let me just add a text here so that you guys can see how it looks fine just a simple text say this once this building model is done we can just run it on. i'll run it directly on the device so that you guys can see you can see that now we have the app running on our device right uh now yeah like for instance you can change this as well let me change this you can have anything inside the screen guys it's as simple as that button uh button will have a on click attribute on click we'll just leave this blank for now and then what should that button contain the button button would contain a text text uh, one button fine save this as you can see now we have a button right now uh, we were about to write a if you remember we were about to write a uh, counter app so let's do that to do that what we need to do is we'll need a column a column is exactly similar to the column in uh, flutter so i'll remove this box now and write a column This column will now have two things. One is a text called uh, rest, and you need a variable to specify how many times the button has been pressed. So what we'll do is for that we first write a button and then talk about button. Let me just use an icon. Icon start filled filled dot add add. Okay. Now you can see that there is an import here, and if you do this material three for Android, it will immediately sometimes throw up an error. I'll show you how to fix that error as well. All right. Now you can see that it's still an error even after adding the dependency, and it shows up like this. In this case, what you need to first stop the app once. In this case, what you need to do is get into your build.gradle.kts, this file, guys. Okay. And here, what you need to do is implementation compose.material is there, right? Just copy this and then add material 3. Fine. Now save this. Once you save this, it will ask you that it should be synced in order for the project to work. So you just sync it now and then close this. This will sync it up and once it is done, uh, it, that there won't be any more errors. Now icons.fill.add. dot add. Now all you need is a variable to show the number of clicked, uh, the instances of the clicks, right? So what you can do is just use a variable by remember mutable state of zero. Okay. Now uh, in the here, if you haven't used, if you haven't used Kotlin at all anywhere previously, what this does is simply creates a variable and what this will do is start that variable's value at zero. So whenever this variable is modified, it will just remember the modified value. That is the current, the last value that was saved, that was modified, right? You can, you'll better understand it when you see it in action, guys. Now, all you need to do is on click, uh, pressed. Fine. Now, uh, here, inside this, just give a string interpolation cool right save this now let's run this once again and see how this looks right you can see that there is a uh, pressed 
one guy just tap on it one two three four five six seven all that you see what's happening here right it's as easy as this to create a counter app inside kotlin multi-platform guys and the reason why it appears right at the top is because of this fill max width attribute that i have given here guys so it will take the width into consideration for the entire column and uh, it will horizontally center that so that's why it's appearing at the top now that we have that there uh, let's go ahead and why don't we just uh, try and see if this runs in ios and see how that looks so just to give you guys an idea i already have a simulator here an ios 15 simulator iphone 15 simulator and let me just to run this on ios all you need to do is uh, just click on edit configurations inside ios application ios app choose the simulator if you already have one running choose it otherwise just choose something that has an ios version above 17 point something uh, otherwise, it will start showing build errors, guys. That's why 17.5 is better. Even if you don't have 17.5, choose 17.2 or something. So I already have iPhone 15 17.2 iOS uh, that's running. So I'll just give OK. There is app. Now, if you just click on Run, it'll immediately start an iOS build, and it will be run on the iOS simulator, as you'll see in a couple of seconds. As you can see here, we have this nice looking interface in ios as well and it works exactly like it would in android as well which means our app works fine you get it right let me just remove that icon it looks a little bit yeah now it's cool right now if i just tap on and like i said it's it's a very simple example that i wanted to show you guys today that's it so yeah, you can do a lot of other stuff like this as well, guys. Uh, as you saw here, the app is pretty much simple. It was pretty much simple to code this entire thing. And there's a ton of stuff that you can do since this is native for both Android as well as iOS. For instance, let me show you one more thing before we wrap up this video. Uh, let this be there. So what we'll do is instead of this, instead of this, I'll just uh, show, we'll just add a thing called show. And uh, I'll have one more variable where bottom sheet, bottom sheet by remember mutable state of uh, false. Fine. Now let me just add a sheet state. Sheet state is something this is for, this is not even actually needed as of now. Why is it not? Why is the auto complete? Not and throws up an error. Okay, this is you need to import this from material three. Yeah, now it will be fine. But I guess it will say that it needs to. Yeah, we need to add this opt-in annotation since this is an experimental. Anyway, yeah. Now we have a sheet state. This is for programmatically closing the sheet. Now let's just try to bring up a bottom sheet. Similar, similar to this here, we had a variable, right? Similarly, we have a boolean now that will either take up a value of false or true. So in case it's pressed, it initially it starts with false. In case it's pressed, it should become true, right? Bottom sheet equals true. That's it. And here, uh, outside of this button, let me actually code the bottom sheet, but inside the column. Inside the column, if bottom sheet uh, model model bottom sheet bottom model bottom sheet modifier modifier dot max fill height and then sheet state and then on dismiss request uh, bottom sheet equals false you guys understand what's happening here right it is pretty much self-explanatory if the bottom sheet is becomes true we are showing up a model bottom sheet that's it and then inside this, you can simply save this. Once again, run this. Initially, we'll just see how this looks on uh, iOS. And then now, if I just tap on show, we can see that we have a native bottom sheet with just few lines of code, right? I can just swipe down to dismiss that. This is really cool, right? 
I just have like very few lines of code if you see here guys this is the only variable that we are using here the sheet state will be used later on guys you can check whether the sheet is opened or closed when you are doing some asynchronous operation and then when the operation completes you can just close the sheet that's why we are having like a sheet state variable now i'll talk about such things in the upcoming videos but as of now you can see how easy it was to create a bottom model sheet with just a few lines of code i'll show this exactly how this looks in android as well since this is entire thing is a native app right like i said so let me just quickly show that on android as well so for android as usual click here click compose app and then if i now tap on show bottom sheet you get an excellent bot you can just okay the bottom sheet looks a little bit dirty because let me just add a padding here modifier 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 dot padding 15 dot dp fine okay dp should we need to import now with the padding obviously it looks really good right so we can just dismiss just like that we have a beautiful bottom model sheet bottom model sheet so yeah this is exactly how we can run use kotlin multi-platform to create native apps inside both ios as well as android guys and you saw how easy that was so in the upcoming videos what i'll do is i'll start building some showing you how to build some beautiful ui the uh, using kotlin multi-platform then and that will run natively on both android as well as ios platforms and uh, i'll also show you guys how to build entire applications once again that will run natively on both android and ios so yeah guys uh, i hope uh, you really like this video and like this sort of content i'll also make like a couple of videos uh on kotlin as well as 50 ui so that you guys could get up to speed uh before actually starting to dive deeper into this kotlin multi-platform uh so yeah guys if you like this video kindly hit the like button if you really love this video and would like to help me kindly subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends so that uh my viewership increases and obviously the number of likes increases and it helps out with the youtube algorithm so yeah guys drop a comment if you caught any error while running this and i'll try to help you out uh yeah and i'll see you guys in my next video bye